Okay, we're going to finish up the legislative branch, or this portion of it, um, with the Senate, which is known as the Upper House. Remember, the House of Representatives is the Lower House. Um, and again, the Senate was part of the Connecticut Compromise over representation. You had the Virginia plan that wanted it based on population. You had the New Jersey plan that wanted it based on equal representation. So we get the Connecticut Compromise. Roger Sherman comes in and says, let's have a bicameral legislature. House of Representatives based on population, and the Senate will be based on equal representation. Every state will have two senators, so we have 50 senators, which means we have 100 senators in total. Um, and we talked about before, but from Article 5, which is about amending and the process that um, we have to go through to make changes to the Constitution, um, the one thing that can never be changed um, about the Constitution is that we will always have equal suffrage. Suffrage means voting, equal voting in the Senate. Um, originally, when the Constitution was written, they provided for the state legislatures to pick the two senators that they wanted to send to represent the interests of the states. We talked about the House of Representatives, who have always been chosen by the people, um, <clears throat> were intended to represent the people. But the states needed representation, too, because what's good for one district in one state may not be uh, good for the whole entire state. So um, <clears throat> we definitely have the uh, 17th Amendment here. I apologize, my phone just rang. Um, <clears throat> so the 17th Amendment changed that. A lot of people didn't think that was very democratic. And so um, they wanted the people to be able to pick the pres or excuse me, pick the Senate just like, um, <clears throat> just like they picked the House of Representatives. So this process was intended to make the uh, Senate more democratic by allowing the people. Remember, democracy means people have the power. So we're going to make the um, Senate more democratic by now allowing the people and not the state legislature uh, to pick the senators. Uh, they do serve for six years, and they are staggered terms, which means um, one-third or 33 uh, senators are up for election every two years. Uh, so two years you'll have a certain 33, two years later a different 33, and then two years later the remaining 34, so that you have a continuous body um, that never uh, can completely change. And remember that the House of Representatives, every two years, all 435 members are up for re-election. Um, so you could have, in theory, all of those changing, but in the Senate it's only going to be one-third. Um, and then you never have two senators from one state who are ever up for election at the same time. So this election we had one uh, member in the Senate, next year we'll have the other member, and then the following year um, neither one of our senators will have served their six years, so we won't have a senator up for election then. Um, there are three constitutional requirements to be in the Senate. You have to be 30 years old, which is five years older than <clears throat> the House. You have to be a citizen of the United States for nine years, and then you have to live in the state that you're running for office. So if you'll notice, the requirements to be Senate are in, in the Senate are a little bit more than what they are in the House. The House was 25 seven and live in the state, this 39, um, and then also living in the state. And we know that the House of Representatives is responsible for impeaching the president. That just means, once again, that we're going to look at the evidence. Is there enough evidence to have a trial? If there are enough votes in the House saying, yes, we believe there is enough evidence, then we move to the Senate and we hold the trial, um, the impeachment trial for president. Um, they are also responsible for confirming all presidential appointments. So this goes to our checks and balances um, and separation of powers. Um, the impeachment process, we can get rid of judges, we can get rid of the president um, and different officials, and so this is a check that the Senate has on the other two branches. Confirming presidential appointments, once again, this is one of the checks that the Congress or the Senate more uh, specific has over the President of the United States. They also get to ratify treaties that have been negotiated by the President. Once again, a check. The President gets to negotiate treaties with other countries, but then the Senate has to ratify those particular treaties. Leadership in the Senate. <clears throat> 
the president of the Senate um, is the vice president. So in the Constitution, um, and we just read Article One, um, that the president or the vice president, excuse me, is the president of the Senate. Um, not necessarily always from the majority party. Right now the Senate is controlled by the Republicans and our Vice President is a Democrat. So um, his only function in the Senate is to break ties. He cannot debate, um, can't vote any other time because he's not a member of the Senate. But if there is a tie, um, that's really the only constitutional duty that the Vice President has besides if something happens to the President he becomes uh, the president. So the only function that the vice president has is to serve as president of the Senate and to break ties. Um, so in the Constitution in Article 1, they provide for a temporary president, the president pro tempore, they call him the president pro tem. Um, and this is a temporary floor leader um, in case the president of the Senate cannot um, be in session and anymore. Um, it's not likely that uh, the vice president is going to sit through Senate sessions. They're much busier now than they were um, when the Constitution was first written. But the president pro tem, not elected, uh, they get this position because they are the longest serving member in the Senate from the majority party. They are not necessarily the oldest member because you could have someone older in life decide, um, or later in life decide, that they want to run for Congress and win and only be in there a few years and be older than most of the other members. So it is the person who has served longer in the Senate, but they have to be from the majority party. Majority leader, this one is really, really important because you would think that the president of the Senate or the president pro tem would be uh, the most influential members. But once again, the president of the Senate is there, not even because he's a senator, um, just to break ties. So not a very important position whatsoever. The president pro tem, not elected to that position. They just happen to be uh, serve longer than anyone else. They might not be influential in any way, shape, or form. Um, and so the majority leader is the most influential member of the Senate. Nothing happens in the Senate unless the majority leader says. Um, an example, a current example that's been going on lately um, is the fact that we have an empty seat uh, on the Supreme Court. Uh, President Obama wants to nominate someone and actually put forth a name, Mitch McConnell, who is currently the majority leader, says we're not going to vote on it. So because the majority leader in the Senate, it doesn't matter if all 99 other senators think this is a good idea, let's take a vote on it, because he is the majority leader, nothing happens in the Senate, nothing comes to a vote. Um, no bills get looked at, no confirmation hearings happen whatsoever unless the majority leader. So they are the most influential member and they are, are chosen by the majority party um, in the Senate. You have a minority leader um, and I should have just put leads the minority because right now the Republicans actually have control um, of the Senate. Um, so the, the minority leader right now is actually um, Harry Reid, and he is resigning, so they will pick a new one <clears throat> when the uh, new term starts, or actually they're already starting to pick their new leadership positions. Um, so the minority leader leads the minority party, and once again, in this case, that is the Democrats. Um, so they're just to try and keep the, the minority party together and voting uh, uh, along those lines. And we talked about the whip in the House. The Senate also has whips. Um, they assist the majority and the minority leaders. They're the ones who are keeping track of how everyone in their particular party is going to vote and try to get them on board and to inform the majority leader and the minority leader um, if uh, who's voting and who's not.